Hey guys, it's Jessica Hayes. So this week in the mail, I received this Lolita capsule collection from Kat Von D Beauty. So this is also including the launch of this Lolita eyeshadow palette as well. You guys know the drill with this. Usually I'll do just a makeup all over the face, first impressions and a review at the end. So if you wanna see what it's like, keep watching. So as always, packaging is super duper cute. You can always expect that from Kat Von D palettes. If you've been around on this channel for a while, you probably know that I'm not like really hugely into pinks and purples and plums. It's just, for some reason, it's not my thing. I prefer more oranges and reds and browns. So I don't know what I was expecting, but I just thought I'd see a little more reds or something in this palette, uh, but Lolita is definitely the most earthy, reddish undertone one with it, and I'm pretty excited about this shade as well. I'm just gonna start off with just a little bit of uh, milk concealer on my eyes. I'm not going to use a eyelid primer or anything like that. Um, and I'm going to start off with, see, I feel like I really obviously wanna use Lolita, but I I want like a warmer shade to blend with it, like a warmer transition shade for Lolita, but there is none. So I'm going to use this one, Besitos, Besitos. I'm never good with pronunciations. Uh, so yeah, so Besitos, I'm going to use all over the eye and I already love it. See, there we go. I always do this with pinks. I'm always like, meh, I don't want to use any pinks. And then once I do it, I really end up loving it. And this color is blending so nicely, even without an eyeshadow primer on top. So quite impressed. So I'm going to take this big fluffy Cosette 175 brush and I guess I'll go back to that the Cito's color and use it with a little bit of this lighter one next to it and just start to blend that color out a little bit. I guess I was hoping for a warm Lolita palette, but this is definitely, other than three colors in it, I'd say this is more of a, a cool toned plum palette, which plums are great for hazel, green, brown eyes. I mean, they. They look good on everyone pretty much, so. These just blend so nicely. I'm really not, you can see that I'm not using any effort at all. All right, so now I'm going to go in with Con Amor, and I'm just gonna deepen up the crease with that color. These pigments are blowing my mind now. I mean, the pigments of most of the Kat Von D palettes have been pretty good, but these for a matte, vegan, plummy toned eyeshadow, like, holy whoa. Oftentimes I find that it doesn't matter whether it's vegan or not, plum and uh, purple eyeshadows get a little bit grabby sometimes, but these are just impressed. So I'm using a combination of these two brushes here. This is a 220 brush and the 175 brush and I'm just kind of depositing the color with a smaller blending brush and then going back through with a little bit on the tip of this brush and just blending it out. Trying to use as many colors as possible in the palette so that you can all see them. Uh, if you're looking for swatches of this palette, I generally don't really do arm swatches because my arms are covered in tattoos, but I'm sure eventually on the wonderful world of YouTube makeup, someone will have a swatch available. Just swatching them on my face for you instead. This big 165 brush with a little bit of that lighter color that we're using, Besitos. So far I've used Con Amour and then these two lighter colors to kind of blend out. I'm going to use this one right here. I'm just gonna stop saying them because I am. I'm gonna put that into the inner corner of the eye right here. Dude, I'm not even using firm brushes. I'm using fluffy brushes to lay these down there's no fallout and like look at that pig look at that pigmentation 
Oh my gosh, I think this might be the best pigmentation that I've ever seen in Kat Von D products. This is insane. I just kind of wiped that off. I'd love to say I wiped it off on a paper towel that's sitting right here, but I actually just have my pajama pants on. So I just wiped my brush off lightly on my pajama pants. And now that I don't have that much product on the brush, I'm just going to use the tip of it just to blend out that inner corner there. Next, I'm going to take my Cosette 200 brush. I'm gonna use this really like magenta plummy color here. I'm just gonna pop that underneath the eyes. I'm gonna use more of a padding motion for that. So this is gonna be the darker color underneath the eyes. And then I'm probably obviously going to smudge it out and blow it out a little bit. I do have this wig with bangs on. So I think it's really nice when you have a super smudgy lower lash line and bangs. Just dipping into that color, it did kind of go everywhere. It, I didn't get any fallout underneath my eyes, but you can see how pigmented it is. So just be careful with that one. I'm gonna grab Lolita on the tip of this 220 brush. I'm going to use Lolita to blend out that underneath color. Whoa, I look like a right old mess here. Guess this probably wouldn't be the brush that I would choose to do this. I'm going to grab my smaller little 185 brush because this one's just a little too big for that. To clean it up, I'm just going to use my little foundation brush that I've been using. So in hindsight, what I should have done with that is probably apply and buff it in in little circular motions with this brush and then buff it out with this brush. Go back in with this more precision blending brush. And then wipe that brush off on your paper towel. And then I'm going to go back in with a mixture of Lolita and this guy right here. And just do a little more buffing underneath just to make sure it blends seamlessly into the skin. I want to do two different looks. Like for now, I'm just going to do a matte lid and I'm going to use this one, Hermosura. And I'm going to pat that onto the lid of the eye. And that just kind of blended in with all of the colors there. It's not really any definition there anymore, which I was hoping for a little more definition, but I'm going to take this color right here and I'm just going to deepen up the outer corner of the eye a little bit with this 185 brush. And then I'm just going to take that back into the inner corner of the eye and just make that a little bit deeper and darker in there as well. I always love doing just a first impressions review so that you guys can see my true reactions. I uh, can't hide anything on my face pretty much. So you always know that the reaction you see is what you get. So I think that's going to be it for the matte eye look. I'm not going to use the Lolita Inkwell liner on the eyes. Oh, maybe I will. I just, to me, it's not dark enough. It would probably be prettier if you use like these lighter colors in the palette for it. Um, but we can just do it and see what it looks like. And then if we don't like it, we can always add black over the top of it. Yeah, see, that just kind of did nothing. I honestly don't really know how often I would wear this liner color, but it is fun for sure. Just. I think that this would look best with a really pretty light color all over the eyes and then just the liner and that's it. I'm just gonna add some of the uh, dagger liner, some lashes and mascara and then I'll meet you guys back for some lips. So after much digging, because it's always so hard to find a single shadow, I found the original Lolita and I just wanna swatch it next to the Lolita in the palette for you just to see if there's any difference. So. Lolita from the palette, Lolita from the original. Wow, so check that out on the finger. For some reason I've got white on my hand now. But so this is Lolita from the shadow. And then this is Lolita from the palette. You can see there's not too much of a difference, but the Lolita from the single pan shadow is actually a little bit a little bit lighter and a little more orange. I am going to use 
a little bit of the Lolita single shadow just as a blush. It's super pigmented, so you do have to be really careful with it. So I'm just kind of tapping it onto more so like where the edge of my contour is ending right there. And I'm just going to buff it into the apples of the cheeks. For lips, obviously these ones down here, you've seen all of them before. I do have a swatch of all of the lip liners on my channel. I also have a swatch of all of the studded kiss. Uh, I don't know if I've swatched Lolita 2 with my Everlasting Liquid Lipstick swatch because it wasn't out yet, but you've seen it before. For the lips, I'm going to take OG Lolita and I'm also going to take the Everlasting Glimmer Veil. The Glimmer Veil is probably the thing that I'm most excited about in this range. So, And I'm just going to color my whole lip in with this. Actually... I use Lolita, just straight up Lolita on the top. Yeah, I like Lolita better. Mm, there's not much difference, but it's just a little more plummy. My lip liners are so nice and creamy. You can just wear them all over the lip as a lipstick as well. So I haven't even swatched this yet, but it looks so pretty in the tube. Look at that. <laughs> I love these glimmer veils. They do stay on like crazy, so you warned. There we go. There is the Lolita Everlasting Glimmer Veil. I don't know. This isn't really a lip color I would totally gravitate towards, but I do think it would look really cool over the top of something more plummy. I just wish it was a little more cooler undertone, but I guess that like gold reflect in it is really bringing out more of a warm undertone with the glimmer veil. I just like everything to be a little more unwearable, but it's certainly a very wearable glimmer veil compared to all of the other colors that they have. I guess I expected warmer on the eyes and I expected more plummy on the lips, but that's just me and my own personal taste. Actually, it's kind of growing on me now. I like that high, high shine of it. But what I did want to do is wipe this off, do a different lip, and put the glimmer veil on my eyes. It is not recommended for the eye area, uh, but glimmer veil on the eyes is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to take this off and then we're going to pop it on the eyes. I want to use a slightly fluffy but not too rounded brush so I'm going to use this Furless Pro 2E brush and then I'm just going to grab a little bit on my finger and I just want it right in the middle of the eye just like a your normal kind of halo eye. I'm just going to pat that onto the middle of the eye and then I'm going to use that brush just to lightly buff it out just a little bit on the edges so that there's no harsh line. Just kind of tap around the edges to get rid of that line. And then I'm going to pop a little bit underneath the eye as well. Bring that down just a little bit. Kind of like a, a little glittery tear-ish eye. Go over it just a little bit for a little more metallic. You can use these glimmer veils as more of a sheer glitter over the top or you can layer them to make them like a really super metallic foil as well. So there we go. I'm gonna use Lolita on the lips to finish it all off. I'm gonna do some bottom mascara, fix these bangs or my fringe and I'll be back for it. I will be back for a review. Okay, so I'm back just to chat a little bit about the products mini review. Not that you really need one because, you know, obviously you see the first impressions of the products and you pretty much know how I feel about them. So I'm going to say, I don't think I've ever said no to any of the Kat Von D palettes. I've really liked them all and I feel like every time that another one comes out, they just keep getting better and better. So this one, for matte vegan purples, it is just... It's a win for me. The pigmentation was crazy on those. And you saw, if you're a little more experienced with makeup, you'll know that putting 
packing in a color with a fluffy brush is usually you have to take a little bit of work to build up with it and these ones just the pigmentation is insane with them and they blended really well as well the only thing that I would probably like to see in this is one kind of lighter and warmer color just to blend Lolita with but it's not in there. That's how I was envisioning this palette as it had been talked about for a really long time that this is going to be coming out. I'm not disappointed in it that is for sure. Uh, it reminds me a lot of just a bigger version of the Kat Von D Plum Quad. If it was a big Lolita palette with a bunch of warmer Lolita colors, then it would pretty much look like every single other palette that I tend to gravitate towards and hoard. So this palette is a yes for me. I would purchase this with my own money for sure. Other things that are new in the line, obviously all of the lipstick colors, they're just part of the Lolita line so they've been out for a while. Uh, we had this Everlasting Glimmer Veil which I really like on the eyeballs but I already have a ton of other pigments like loose pigments that look really similar to this and personally for me I would never really wear this lip color. Uh, it's like a, a rose gold which is definitely trendy for some people but I prefer more of a, a plummy I don't know I just I'm that's just personally me I like plummy more deadish looking lips rather than pretty rosy gold it just reminded me a little bit of mother of the bride kind of color inkwell liner in Lolita I definitely love this I don't know whether I would buy it myself because I feel like I would end up using it only a few times. This definitely wouldn't be an everyday color for me, but I really like it. I think it's super fun and I'm just going to have to wait until I do a look that's a little more of a lighter color so that you can see this color pop against it. I really like the consistency and the brush in the inkwell. I've been using the black one for a little bit now, so. So that's my thoughts on the Kat Von D Lolita capsule collection. Let me know in the comments below if you are a plummy, pinky kind of lover and you plan on getting this palette, or if you're just a hoarder of awesome palettes like me and you're just going to get it because it's limited edition and when it sells out, you're going to regret it. So it's not out yet, but I think by the time I upload this video, it might be out on Sephora, Kat Von D Beauty, US and Canada, and then Debenhams UK and Ireland. It's coming December 2018 and it says Sephora International January 2019. So that's when you can expect to be seeing those online and in stores in your regions. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you know what to do. Hit subscribe. I always do vegan and cruelty-free makeup tutorials and I will have a favorites one coming up very soon for you guys because it has been a while. So I'll see you then. Bye.